Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is on, in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God, and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. It was that one tree that caught my attention, that always drew me in. I say always because I drove by the forest almost every day. And I say forest even though it wasn't really much more than a wooded patch of land. Set aside by the municipality in an effort to be perceived to be more green. And each time I drove by, that one tree seemed to stand just a little bit taller, just uh, that much more alive somehow than the others. It must have been so, because how else could it have caught my eye from the road as I drove by? And on this occasion, I decided to do what I told myself each time I would. I parked the car in a little clearing where others had obviously parked before. Dog walkers, probably. And I got out to go for a walk. I decided that the walk would be brief, just enough to clear my head, stretch my legs, and uh, allow me to tell others and myself that I'd started my new exercise regime. I took note of that odd last thought, knowing that it is often those odd fleeting thoughts that express what's really going on in our souls. Why did I have to justify uh, going out for a walk. Now the tree stood farther into the woods than I had thought, or intended actually. Funny how many other trees of all shapes and sizes separated that tree, my tree, from the road on which I traveled each day. Why is it that I had never noticed these trees in the drives by? It was a fleeting thought not considered well, as I pressed on to the goal that had prompted me to stop the car in the first place. Now that I had stopped, I was definitely going to see that my tree. And when I came on it, it became clear why it had stood out from the others. It was well established, an almost majestic looking tree that stood both in somewhat of a clearing and on a little bit of a rise, not a hill so much, but a slight elevation in, on the mostly level ground. It was a grand older tree that had birthed many branches laden with yet more branches. And these branches, uh, having sprouted numerous twigs and, and tributaries in a way, and all of them, they were blanketed with leaves. Leaves of different shapes, different size, each reaching out and reaching upward to catch their glimpse of the sun. Colored with shades of green that would make any paint store owner jealous. My tree looked a bit of a keener among all the other trees. A celebrity tree among countless other trunks of ordinary. But no sooner had I had that thought, and I noticed that my tree had, in fact, many others like it 
around it. The tree that had caught my eye from the road and had held my underfighted attention for the many trips that I took on that road and that I looked at now for the last 10 minutes, around this tree there stood many others. And each was worthy of attention in their own right, really. The ones I saw first bore unmistakable resemblance to my road-wrapped tree. Certainly of the same species, though less far along on their journeys to majesty, as they uh, grew upward towards the sun. They were also well-rooted, but they were certainly less established. They were clad with the same intricately textured bark, yet less defined by wear and weather. As stately, but less self-assured somehow. Prodigies, perhaps, of that tree, my tree, keen to carry on the heritage. And now that my eyes had wandered from the one tree to its many kin, my eyes were opened to the richness of the forest, the beauty of these woods. Because suddenly, I saw that there were many other trees, each as deliberately different as the next. It was as if each had been planted there, just there, to make that budding forest complete. To add to the texture of this patch of woods, to draw one deeper into the beauty of these timbers that were preserved. Uh, and then I wandered in and amongst the trees, no longer bound by uh, the color-coded half-poles that marked out the prescribed paths of these woods, intended to keep the hikers on uh, carefully selected uh, lanes uh, where everybody walked. No, I was caught now walking through uh, the leaves that had fallen everywhere. Careful uh, I had to be to uh, not to fall over the twigs that had fallen as well. And I was caught up in, in the, this great biodiversity of trees. And somewhere deep inside myself, I resisted describing this place with so technical a term, biodiversity. Though technically correct, it seemed to offend that which my eyes and, and, and my soul even was taking in. This great forest of trees was, was pulsating with life, rich with diversity and, and bringing with, with testimony. Yes, testimony. Each tree that I saw uh, now spoke to me, as it were. Each had a story to tell. Here stood a tree whose leaves were dried up curled up edges, about to be popped off by the new green-tipped buds that were pushing in behind them. Over there stood a tree whose trunk took a tormented twist before it reached upwards once again. And, and there, a bent tree, trying to stretch, stretch out from, from underneath the dominating presence of another jutting out at an odd and seemingly impossible angle to catch a glimpse of the sun. And over there, a clump of straight evergreens, defying gravity by shooting skyward in perfect parallel lines. Wait, what was that? A, a, a sprig, a tiny sprig. No, uh, there were dozens of them pushing up through a heavy bed of rain-soaked, decaying leaves. They were determined to live and to grow, to be counted and to be noticed in this grove of maturing trees. New growth, everywhere I look now, new species carried to this forest patch as seeds, perhaps, carried by wind gusts, <laughs> an overly ambitious insect, and migrating birds. And then I noticed the many trees wh whose attempts to stand proud, many of them had been marred by the unexpected, though inevitable realities of, of life. 
once great branches torn away from the trunk by a raging storm, connected to the tree only now by an outer layer of bark, not enough to give it the nutrients to live, to really live and bloom. And there, another tree, its top was cropped violently by a terrifying flash of light accompanied by a mighty clap of thunder. I could just see it in front of me. These trees stand damaged, I thought, but they were alive. Besides, and, and beside them, a few flowering trees on the edges of the clearing. They could benefit more from the nurturing rays of sunshine. Their branches burst forth with color, flaming fuchsias and brilliant white. And then, then my eye catches that tree that has attracted the knife edge. It seemed to have been tapped for its rich, sweet sap, its medicinal value, or simply, maybe it was a canvas for a lover's need to record their love for each other. This tree stands proud. It stands reassuringly as a provider, a reminder of something bigger and beyond ourselves. Now, wherever I look, my thoughts are racing. These trees have set my thoughts on fire, have set my soul on things beyond. I am struck in this forest of trees by thoughts about the nature of appreciation. Because that is where my walk has taken me. Into these woods, it is true, but further and, and, and much deeper than that. As I was walking in and amongst the trees of all kinds of various shapes and sizes, I came to see and to appreciate each tree for its worth. To recognize its place, its place in the woods. I've looked at so many trees and ultimately looked at each with a growing appreciation. Allowing each tree to be, to see why it is and how it is that it came to be. To understand that this tree didn't get enough sunlight and so it turned that way. To appreciate the gnarled wood of another. To accept the moss that clads one the brilliant blossoms of another, and the broken, misshaped branch of yet another. And I do this without a feeling of a hint of a threat, without judgment or condemnation, or a need to change the tree from what it is. I simply glory in each tree, each tree a thing of beauty. A glorious, life-giving, soul-restoring walk in the woods. And then, as I walk back to the park, parking lot where I left the car, I imagine all of them, all these trees, that is, as human beings. People of various shapes and sizes. Each one unique. Some scarred. Others brilliant, some twisted, some tall, some feeble and some gnarled, and many new, bursting with new life. And each person part of a greater whole, without judgment, without comparison, without competition really. Each one placed among the others according to some greater plan towards some larger purpose. Each of them accepted. Each of them appreciated by him and because of him. Because of a tree. Calvary. It is Lent, and I hear the voice of Jesus tell me, come, let me take you on a journey. 
a journey to the cross.